we all going for massages after this? Well, I, actually, <laughs> I was just saying, because we were going to start this, check, and then check, Jen check. jumps in about an urban massage. So, Urban massage. Mm. It's an app. So they you just do it they, on the street. No, they, they'd, I would quite happily have one on the street sometimes, but they, um, no, you, you call, you have an app, you decide you want one at five o'clock in the evening, and then you go on and the, the, the uh, therapists who are available till 10 at night are on there. You can get one straight to your door. Oh, they come to you? Mm-hmm. Mm. I use them all the time, DK. Yeah, it's dangerous. But then what happens, we find a really good one and then we start booking her privately. So, oh, I see. Because some of them yeah, will well, do it That's privately. like us with babysitters. <laughs> right, well, you've got notepad. I don't need notes here because we've got my wife here. You've got history got, on your we've side. We've got my wife here, Denise Welsh. Welcome to Create, Sell, Repeat. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here, Lincoln Oh, we're Channel. delighted for you to be here. Fantastic. This is very bizarre. Why is that? Well, just because... You know us. You've no, been... I know I know you, but I know you so well. And I know, and I'm married to this one. It just seems quite bizarre. So I'm excited. Fire away. We were going to do this in your kitchen at w- once upon a time, weren't we? Yeah. I'm waiting for Den to ask you how you put up with me. That oh, was that, one of the questions believe that was you coming me, up. That's that will definitely be coming. <laughs> But how far back are we going with this? We're going further before you guys met me, right? Oh yes. God, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. because well, I, we, I guess when we, you know, us yeah. getting together is 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 partly how Lincoln, you know, obviously I'm going to take all the credit for Lincoln being an international <laughs> artist. So let's start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so inform us, because I'm, you know, my history of you guys goes back five or six years. Mm-hmm. So there's quite a few years before that that we need to be filled in. Well, we met, was it 11 years ago? Mm-hmm. I was um, I was on the tour of the dancing on Ice TV show. So mm-hmm. you do the TV show and then you do the tour, and I was the kind of sympathy vote to do the tour, I think. <laughs> and um, so we, well, we met in a nightclub at mm-hmm. six in the morning mm-hmm. that doesn't open till four. So that will tell you where we were Jet in, Black. Our, in our lives. It was yes. called Jet Black. Where, where in the world was this? It's in Holborn. Okay. It was in Holborn. I don't even know if it's there anymore. No. And central I'd, London for our international yeah, central yeah. London. And I had always um, told the story, which in my, um, you know, bearing in mind, we both had alcohol issues, which we've both been, well, certainly me has been, I've been quite honest about self-medicating for, for many years. And I always tell the story that I was out at this um, club with friends and um, we all had lots to drink. Um, went down to get into a party that I'd been invited to at the after show of the Brits. And um, I was refused entry. And I was apparently, you know, quite incandescent with rage. And they said, no, you are on the list, but not the 24 people that you seem to have in your group. (laughs) So in my mind, I hailed a taxi and went, jet black, please. Until my son, Matty, only about a year ago, said, yeah, but you've missed out the bit about the party at Bungalow 8. No recollection. He said that... I then gate crashed a party at Bungalow 8, which was which tiny, I was at. That's tiny, name that keeps coming tiny, which tem- I was at. Yeah. tiny Tempers birthday party, mm-hmm. where apparently Lincoln had also been. So our life was like the film Sliding Doors. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we both ended up at this club and the rest is history. And the fact that we came through the madness, as we call it, to be where we are now mm. is quite unbelievable because, of course, to those people who have any idea of of our story or my story um, is that we we became sober eight eight years ago, mm-hmm. and um, and I I was going off with my dad on a trip to LA to see Matty, my son, who's a musician, and um, I had just come through one of my periods of clinical depression that I've had for thirty one years, and Lincoln was being incredibly understanding and wonderful about it because those people who haven't experienced mental health will uh, may be interested to know that a very underrepresented group of people are those people who love and live with people with mental health Mm -hmm. issues. And so meeting Lincoln and not knowing him that well, and then Lincoln having never experienced, didn't have any lived experience of anyone with depression, I was really blown away with how wonderful he was with it. So Mm. I went out to this art shop because I had seen when I was with Lincoln in London and we were just sort of getting together as you do in the very beginning. 
um, through a lot of rubbish going on as well because I was being hacked by the papers and it was all, the fact that we're still here is amazing. And I went round to his flat that he had in Hampstead and I saw, um, and I, you know, what I, what I knew about art, you could write on my thumbnail. You know, I, I, I'm not that much more educated now, but you literally could write on a thumbnail. But I saw this um, David Hockney painting and even I knew it was a David Hockney painting. I think it was the biggest splash. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my God, um, David Hockney. And he said, no, it's mine. And I went, no, that David Hockney. And he said, no, it's mine. I painted it. It's a copy for someone who loves David Hockney. Mm. And when you say that your jaw dropped to the floor. Mm. This is I the was first secret coming out. I don't know this about you, Lincoln. And utterly blindsided with this. And he then told me how he did paint. And, and then I discovered under his bed, pulling out these early Lincoln Townleys under his bed. And he said that he would go out and drink and all these sorts of things, you know, when he was in a very dark place and he would come home and paint mm -hmm. and put them under the bed. And, uh, and that was it. Nobody knew, nobody saw them. And so when I was going off to LA with my dad, I went to an art shop and I didn't know about canvases or brushes or paints or anything. And I bought him a bunch of stuff and left it. And when I came back from LA, he had painted his version of my depression. And that is what kind of spawned I suppose. Yeah. Well, I was talking. I was talking to you about wanting to exercise that feeling of, you know, wanting to create. You know, but to be able to look at where I was in my life and how I was changing. So that sort of that evolving. Mm. Came and you out didn't on... know if you could paint the madness not being in the madness. Yeah, and that was that was. Mm. But I, I I had a desire to to look at whether or not I'd be able to create a to become an artist who's who that's their profession, mm. you know. And that was something that was in my head, in my mind. You know, mm. I've always been a salesman, PR man. But could mm. I get to that point where I could paint my paintings and sell them? Mm. That's we, really we, interesting. We, we, interesting. We spoke Absolutely. about that, didn't we? And it's like, when I've what, spoken what to- What Denise said though about painting the madness when you're not in the madness. Yeah. Because you and I have never talked about that, but actually that's really interesting because uh, all of your paintings are inflected from that time in your life, aren't they? Yeah. yeah but or, you've pe been... or people that I had around and you didn't me. Yeah. Know. It's yeah. like I've spoken yeah. to musicians. I mean, you're a musician as well, DK. And you know, I've spoken to musicians before who have had previous issues with drugs mm. and, and, and a lot with marijuana. And they have talked to me about the fact that They've worried when they were going to give up if they mm. could still be as creative. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's kind of a similar thing of, you know, Lincoln would go home in the madness, mm. throw the madness onto mm. a canvas. And of course, those paintings were brilliant, but he would never have had the capacity to sell those paintings mm -hmm. being in mm -hmm. there. But you, you still tell me that these days, Lincoln, that, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll see paintings the next day and you won't even remember having painted mm. them because you'll be doing them in some kind of mental state yeah i mean yeah it, 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 I, I think there's a lot of artists that go into sort of like that yeah that sort of trance of the you know that that creative world you know um but there's many 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 times i go back in even when we're going to go and for you know do some photography and i'll look at them thinking where on earth was mm. i in my head when i painted that mm. you know and, and that's living with real... me <laughs> I think that's probably yeah probably true of a lot of your work because I think with my depression and mental illness that's put a lot of strain on on Lincoln and your art has been your outlet for 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 what comes with being there for me in in in, in the bad times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a mixture of so many feelings and emotions. My work, but it's I've always been intrigued by you know, what people are willing to go through to succeed. So that's that sort of when it's everything boils down, that seems to be what I'm, I'm left with. And it's like, um, it's like when we met and, you know, and, we, and I started to get to know you and I could, you know, and I saw your awards as an actress and I could, you know, and, and, and as a presenter. And it was, you know, because th those two things don't go hand in hand very often, you know, mm -hmm. and I've, I've had sort of 10 years of, of this and, there's not many presenters that are actors as mm -hmm, well, actors mm -hmm. or actresses, you know. And um, and that was always something that I was fascinated that um, you know, you could you were you were you could turn your hand to that in a very professional way. I, I really looked up to you on that. So that that was something that I felt was interesting for my um motivation mm -hmm. to see if I could express my creativity in a professional way 
as an artist. So, you know, not only buying me that first canvas when, you know, I said, right, I'm going to paint your depression. You, you've given me the motivation and you still do. Um, that I that I had a, there was a possibility I could make this work because it's true though. You, well, you, you I always said had to me, such a faith in you. You and... said to me, you know, give it a go, and but give it a go, and and you know, and it was you know, obviously the point being is you need to sustain a living. You know, mm. what, well, what, I, I think I used to, I used to say this, to Lincoln, you know, you know that there was, was a lot of. She was basically saying, "I'm not going to support you. Do it." Do well, it you yeah, know, yeah, well, I mean, I never yeah. said those words, and 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 you know, we, we would always support each other if if one was going through a sure. needy phase, uh, of course. But I think that I used to get fed up of hearing people say, "Oh, it's not about the money," and it's like, well. If, you know, it is if it is about the money, because if Lincoln doesn't sell his art, he doesn't have any money. Nobody's mm. going to give him mm. any. Mm. So it doesn't, to me, take away from your own pride in, in the amazing work that you create. And I've seen him grow as an artist, even from someone who doesn't have that particular eye. But, you know, people like you who do and, and other people have seen mm. how much he's grown and, and everything. But for people, because people have said it about my business before, you know, it's like, oh, you're selling out. You know, when I did Big Brother, um, and I am an award-winning actress, and I say that with no arrogance, but I am, and and, and I w it's the one thing I know that I'm good at. And, and I say that with pride, and I've worked very hard at my craft. But when people say, and do I regret doing Big Brother? I do for many reasons, but I don't regret the decision to do it mm -hmm. because we, me and my ex-husband, had a tax bill that we couldn't pay. Mm -hmm. And they offered me a cover lot of money to go into a house, which I thought I'd be in for, to, for a week. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I'd be in for four and win it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so to me, it, I had to make that decision to feed my family. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I love the fact that Anthony Hopkins, he used to get slated for it, you know, being such a brilliant actor and he'd do a film like Magic or, you know, amazing film. But then he'd go off and do Hollywood Lives miniseries. And he'd say, yeah, because Hollywood Lives enables me to do mm. a really low budget film that mm. means something to mm. me, a really, mm. you know, amazingly mm. European arty film mm. or something. So I've got to do that. Does it take away from the fact that I'm a fabulous actor? No, it doesn't. Mm. There's a business behind every creative enterprise, isn't there? There There's is. There's got to be a business mind behind it or you don't yeah, get well, to and do Lincoln your creative showed me how to, you know, he'd say things to me like, I would, I will always help friends out, especially through the period we've been through with what's been going on. People with small business and I'll put a post out for them and everything. But sometimes people would send me sort of like, I don't know, a dress in the post that's 30 quid, wanting me to post it. And Lincoln would go, hang on a minute. You can go and get that dress. You're giving, you're, you're diluting your brand by thinking, by everybody thinking that they can just send you something in the post and you'll just put it out there. You know, you can monetize that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, I, but I'm learning to, to make better decisions like that of thinking, hang on a minute, I am. I am just giving I am just giving that away whereas I see somebody else getting a really good paid endorsement and we all need to make money you know you know what it's like just because we're on the telly don't mean we're being paid what they're like in a, you know you read what people like the view girls are being paid in America like would be Goldberg as opposed to what we're paid on this women I mean it's a joke but um I'm not saying it's a joke because I, I love the show but people seem to think that there is you know, you're on telly and you're a bit famous, mm. therefore you're mm. very rich. That's and of course, that's it. We all have to, mm. to make a living. Mm. So, um, well, you both work incredibly hard. I know that from just observing you from afar. Mm. You know, you've got definitely got that in common. You work common, your, your work yeah, ethic. You work very mm. hard, DK. Do, and and yeah. that's why we work well together. You know, that's what I, I think it's, I, I have. I have I have no problem with uh, putting in as much as I need to, as long as I can see that I'm getting the results from yeah. it. Mm. And I think that's what's that's the point about when I wanted to look at you know creatives, that yes, you can put an awful lot of energy into what you create, but you need to be able to, you know, switch off and move into that marketing and sales zone mm. because no one else can do it better than you. But can you do find it. that I mean, a lot of artists are. You know, not just painting artists, but but you know, in the acting profession or anything. You know, a lot of people are very able to um, get on stage and do a, a play for two and a half hours, or you know, paint an amazing painting, but not able to sell themselves. I mean, I know loads of actors who are just brilliant, but they can't sell themselves. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, why don't you just contact that casting director directly? What have you got to lose? If they're not going to give you the part, they're not going to give you the part. But there's the information. Go forward with it. I can't. I can't. And I think that's where you're brilliant because I've seen so many young artists come to you yeah. and talk to you, DK, about how you two 
monetize the the what 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 you I think it's, it's to do with asking questions. Like for instance, you know, if if I was an actor, and I and I had an agent. Well, you were in Dunbreed in the very well, successful YouTube well, series well, filmed in lockdown. Well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. but you know, looking at it, don't is, be is modest, it, Lincoln. Well, you know, you gave. I mean, I can. I'd tell me a lot background. of tricks. You know what I mean, um, but if I was an actor and I had an agent. Um, they would have me on the phone pretty regularly. And I'll tell you why. Because I'd want to help them. I want to help them sell me. <laughs> you would right? drive no, them mad. Was, no, no, you would. No, I don't agree. I think I would be saying, what can I do? What can I do to help with in regards to making me more saleable into projects, films, series, whatever it may be? I would. Because because I believe there needs to be an open communication. I believe that all, all results come from a stream of being able to open up uh, a chat, a conversation, a connection, whatever it is, about where you are and where you want to be. And I think that that's, a, that's where you need to educate people. Like we educate my collectors and we, we, talk to, we talk to prospects to get them to the point of being collectors. And then we start saying, right, okay, we can move you into these different pieces. So in effect, we take full control. No agent or gallery is going to do that for mm. me. You believe in having a team around you, right? Mm. That you yes. can work with and converse with all the time. Yes. It's not. Uh, it's not a. It's not being able to hand it off to an agent and just say, right, that's your project. You deal with that. Yeah, that's work. right. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, you can't be. I've I've tried many many agents and many many galleries, and even though I've got them, I will still be working behind the scenes from what they can see in making my own sales and marketing myself to the to the to the utmost of my capabilities. You know, mm. I've, I'm a I'm a creator. Well you say that you know whoever sells your work would get a cut of it. Yeah. And you if, said that and, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if if it happens to be a London or a New York or an LA gallery and they sell a piece of your work, you will happily pay them a commission. But if also Bill your friend manages to introduce you to someone who buys your work, then Bill will get the commission on That's that. right, yeah. Yeah. You know, good old Bill, we don't actually know him, but um but yeah, but you know that's the, that that's the point, and I think that at first a lot of people thought that you were just sort of dissing galleries, and 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 what what you weren't, you, you were just saying, you know, that galleries have always assumed that that you that that you have to be exclusive. And to be honest, it's been very much like that in the acting world. And sim, yeah. it was uh, that you have to have sole representation. Mm -hmm. Whereas with my agent, I do have sole rep for acting, mm -hmm. but it's like for branding opportunities, she will happily allow me to, you know, to, to do that. That didn't used to be the case. No. Um, you need to have, you, you know, you need to be, you need to have your fingers in a lot of pies. You know, you have. I mean, it's there's no two ways about it. You need to have representation all over. I think it should be the same for actors and presenters as well. I think if somebody has got a, has got a job and, and they think of you, then that should be something they'd be able to put to you. I don't see why there's these barriers. I don't understand it. We live in a world, you know, like, a, you know, the internet world, biggest middleman there is. I mean, that's what I always go on. But I always say that, you know, if, if, if you're not going to do it, it's rare someone else does it for you. you. Your agent, Denise, doesn't work in isolation of you, does she? I mean, you do a hell of a lot of your own well, the promotion. Thing is, well, I, I do. I, I, do, I do that. And, and also my, um, my agent will... Um, you know, my agent works in a, in, in a collective of agents. And the thing is about people say, you know, but why would you pay your commission? Why would you pay commission to your agent because of a job that you got yourself? Well, that's because I know that my agent is working tirelessly for me through, throughout that. So, of mm. course, I will pay her a commission on a job that I... That, that, that I, I get. A lot of people don't understand why you do that, but it's because if you have a good agent, you know, they're not all good agents, but mm. a good agent should be earning from you all the time, whether or not you get offered mm. that job yourself. Mm. And it's also how they she's do- part of your team. How they, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she is, and, it, and it, it's yeah. how they do, um, you know, it's how they do, it's not just getting, get, they can't get you the job, they can get you the audition. Mm. And it's how they do the contract and stuff. And also my agent looks after Louis as well. Mm. Um, that's because Louis on his on his own merits uh, got got that. But at least, you know, we feel that she's up a lot of trust. Absolutely, a lot of trust, a lot of trust with her. As um, you have and, and as, with, and with as your, Lincoln with your team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think I'd have anyone around me I didn't trust. It, it just it's work. because of the work ethic as you, you well, isn't it? Yeah, you, you can't you can't give your you can't give your business. We're all a business. It's a business and a brand. You can't give your you know that your 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 opportunities away. You know, you, you've mm. got to you've got to know when to really sort of knuckle down and get on with them. How do you work. deal with Lincoln, DK? <laughs> Here it comes, clang. Yeah, oh, because Lincoln is. Um, we know Lincoln is a is is a one off in many ways, and if Lincoln is on fire about something, everybody has to be on fire at the same 
time. We know that. And I also see how that gets things done. But as somebody, as his wife, I can probably have it. I will have a different relationship with him as to how I deal with stuff as opposed to you. How do you find his energy sometimes? Well, I mean, sometimes it varies from one end of the spectrum to the other. Uh, but over the years, I have to say it's been overwhelmingly positive. It's had a massive influence on my life and how I conduct my business and in some ways my personal relationships. But Oh, I, really? That's interesting. I, I, I would expect that I've had an influence on Lincoln as well. It's a some, undoubtedly somewhat have. a two-way street. But yeah. He doesn't think that he could operate in so many areas without without you. Not just somebody who does the jobs that you do, but you hmm. because of that um, oh yeah, no, absolutely agreed. Absolutely, there's, there's def I've definitely, I've definitely learned a directness from Lincoln. In, I have in, in dealing with, uh, you know, all of my relationships, be they business or personal, and um, you know, cut, make a lot of shortcuts that way, and not have to deal with a lot of the normal. Do you think that in, a, in that that could also be in sort of layman's terms, as like I see it, I've stopped being so much of a people pleaser since I've been with Lincoln. Mm. I still like people to like me. But I don't put up with the BS as much anymore from people. I think people. British people may be not very good at declaring what they want out of a transaction. And if you are sure about that, and like Lincoln's very direct with me and has always been so, and there's no beating around the bush. No, you know, no. if he wants something, then we need to make sure it, it gets done, you know, and gets done in, in, as quick as we can. Um, and I find that, you know, a lot of the time it's a business transaction. There shouldn't be a lot of pussyfooting around. There shouldn't be a lot of... Um, emotion wrapped up in sure. certain things that need doing you know they've just got to be done and, and and make that happen otherwise we don't progress and we don't move forward yeah and a lot of that's got to do with what we're talking about here sharing all these ideas yeah like I, like, you know this this sort of when when artists approach me on instagram and ask me certain things i always ask them about you know uh, do, who do you work with outside of just your studio so some some of these people have got like a you know assistants but i, don't, I wouldn't say they've got I wouldn't say they've got like a, how can I put it? They wouldn't say, I wouldn't say they've got like a business partner, a partner in their business, someone that they can, they can say, right, okay, I'm going to focus on, you know, this campaign, but how can I make this campaign mm. look good? Because there's a big difference between doing illustration and, and design than there is being a creative. Absolutely. Big and that's the, why. The that's thing why. that I would, that, that I, I guess w w would be possibly a question that would be asked if anybody was listening to, or, you know, watching the, what, whatever, um, investing in the in this in this podcast series that there would be people because I know they did to me there would be people who go well it's easy for you you've got a team but my point is that I want people to know that you didn't have a team you know you no. didn't you didn't have anybody because I know people do that to me well it's all right for you because mm. it's like no hang on a minute nobody gave me anything and it's the same with you mm. that I know that, that there has been criticism. Well, it's all right. You're married to Denise Welsh. Yeah. Who had to go into big brother cause she couldn't pay a tax bill. Mm. You know, it was hardly like whoop de doo Do you know what I mean? It was in a right mess emotionally and physically when, when we met. So it wasn't like there could be any help there. You basically started from, from nothing. And, yeah, and, and a bit scratch. like you did when you were a sales director yeah. as a young kid, right. you, you built yourself up. You had the flash cars and stuff. I'm glad that I missed the flash Harry period. You and you, 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 you did all. Well, you have now got a nice car, but you did all of that. And then you said that they literally took everything away when your business crashed. Yeah. And walked in the car park and took his keys from his car and he waved his car goodbye and you had nothing. Yeah. Licked House, your wounds, cars, went to Everything Mallorca, went. met Peter Stringfellow, came back, mm -hmm. did, did did his club, and yeah. and you and then it happened going. again. You got to keep going. But I know, I you know, I, I'm pretty. I'm aware of my weaknesses. And I steer, I steer clear of them. You know, this knowing your weaknesses is a great thing. I've spoken about that before, but I think it's more to do with it's what it is. Is there is there is a there is what an are your art weaknesses? world. There is an art world. Let me just say this: there's an art world, okay, that's that's projected to us on television, okay. That eight years ago, I started looking at different uh, films and and videos on YouTube about art, okay, and it was all about art. It was about the Renaissance period and all these things. There was nothing about how to position, market, and sell your art. Yeah. Nothing. And I think it was the early stages of Instagram as well at the time in regards to marketing your work that way. So what's happened is, is that television, which is obviously the biggest medium of all, is is projecting out to people that are in the, or let's say, they want to be watching what's going on in the art world, see, see programs like 
the um, Portrait Artist of the Year, Landscape Artist of the Year, uh, different shows that are on, sure. like at the Royal Academy, the Tate, those sorts of things. You know I mean? And it's nothing ever to do about the positioning. I mean, they don't even show you how like they would create a poster to attract more people to no, the show. It's just so about the art is, itself. It's just about the art itself, right? How great would it be, right? So we got you got six or seven people all sit around a circle uh, doing a portrait of Idris Elba, all right? And you've, you've got the person that, you know, is the runner-up. You've got the person who's the winner. No one, none, no one in the whole show ever asks anybody, how'd you get on selling your work, Brian? How'd you get on with that, Mary? You know, how do you position yourself in the real world? How's that work? I would be fascinated in that. Yeah. That would be absolutely fascinating for me to know. This is the winner who's just done the amazing portrait. What are you going to do with that now? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to have prints available? Could they go to your website? It's about looking. It's it's because those people they have this they have the, the, the climax of being on the television, showing their amazing skill. Some mm. of them could be a, a dental nurse. One of them could be a landscape gardener, but they actually paint. Some of them are professional painters. Professional. I get it. I get it. I get it. But what I'm saying is, is that it's about sharing and connection and community. Mm. There should be more of an artist community. Okay. So that's why I, I just think that. The, the, the missing link here is where they go after they put their easel away and mm. go home, mm. right? What are they doing? How are they selling? Sorry, I didn't mean to jump no, in. No, I know you didn't. It was, it was, it's, it's, it was it's only an important thing to talk about because a, me and you sit and watch these no, programs and I always say it. I know. It's a, it, There's but, a lot but, of very successful artists you'll have never heard of. Absolutely. There's a lot of very successful musicians you'll have never heard of. Yes, yeah. yeah. okay. It really yeah. bleeds yeah. into that There's, as well. a, yeah, there's that, also a lot of brilliant actors that have never earned to be in their life because, you know, working in rep... I find it extraordinary. I was in Australia. I was at the Brisbane Powerhouse and uh, Lee Steer, my agent out there, organised for me to go to a university and to talk to a group of students. We went around the university, saw all their booths they're working out of. Amazing work. I mean, some of it was mind-blowing. And then we got them into um, a, like an auditorium and, and they I got introduced and the uh, the head of the university said, this is Lincoln, he's got his show here, they'd all come down to my show. And I said, you know, you guys create some incredible work. Thanks for the introduction. I'm going to ask you one question, guys. How are you going to sell this work when mm. you leave? Mm. And, the, and the, you know, the head of the university more or less jumped up and, and, and went into, you know, we, we're not going into that. That's not something that we want to talk about. You know, you tell us about your artwork. No, I want to tell you about my processes. I mm. want to tell you about what I'm doing, how I sustain a living. This is very important to me. How have I arrived here? It's through me saying to Lee Steer, my agent, I want to do this show here. You know, we, I want to be able to grow. You know, I want to be able to develop. Mm. And that's one of the things that is completely lost in all these universities. Mm. There should be in the last, well, I think it should be all the way through, but in the last six months of you, you know, you're graduating, mm -hmm. it should be, right, this is what you need to do. Okay, you have your graduate show, but everyone's all those people, all those all those uh, those students are waiting for the one agent to come through the door and say, mm. you know what, I want, I'm going to take all these pieces yeah. and I'm going to do a show for you in my gallery. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And while you're while you're there as a graduate, you know, I want and I want them to get on board with us as well, and I want them to watch what we're doing on on YouTube, and I want I want them to subscribe to this because I'm going to go down this road. I'd like to get a student artist on this show as well to talk mm. to them and to be able to say, look, you know, what what could happen, what could what could be done, okay, what could be done is number one, okay, you could be online in a virtual gallery showing the work you're creating during your course and sell it and make some money. Mm. These guys want to make some money. All students want to make money. So, but, but they, they've been, they they've been lectured into thinking that it's almost, it's a dirty word to mention money to do I've with had, their art. I've had students say to me, my tutor has told me to steer very clear of you. <laughs> didn't they? That's a fact. Di didn't they at one college say that they had something that you'd said on their wall or something, which was that something that you'd said about monetizing your art, and it was almost like it was a dirty word. Yeah, it was well, it was. It's it, yeah, I, I do know that. That was about. That was about. You know, uh, this guy talks about. But the being money. a struggling you know, artist is no fun. Don't go with the Don't go with the money. No. Don't, don't think in money. But struggling but, is no fun. Struggling means that you can't have a nice house. Struggling means so that you can't feed your family. Struggling means all of these things. I, or struggling means that you have to have another job as well. This is about wanting to do what I do and what you do for a living they must there must be a reason for it they must be thinking okay if they're worried about money worried about how they're going to monetize this it's going to stem their creativity somehow but you wouldn't find that would you lincoln no not at it's all it's not just not no way i would have been conflict i always go back to 
I, I knew something like this was going to come up. I was going to do something on YouTube or something to talk about this because I wanted to share it because I know there's a lot of people that are going to be creating something and be able to say, you know, I really want to continue this. It's either going to be your parents or your or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your wife or your or your, your situation at work that's going to say to you, I don't think you should be going down this road in trying to sell that art. Mm. Just get yourself a normal job. Mm. That, that's the that's the where I come from. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have gone to art school. My dad died when I was 14 years old. I had to go out and earn a living. My mum said, you've got to go out and make money. Mm -hmm. So I was thrown into that. I had no choice. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I'm coming out of my late 30s and, you know, and I had an opportunity with, with, with the support I had from Denise to be able to say, look, I'll tell you what, and I was very clear about this, very clear. I said, then I need... I'm going to give it one year. I, re I really do believe that I can sell this artwork. You know, and, and I was, I mean, I and was. my dad said to you, what are you going to do to what make are you money? Gonna, what are you going to do yep. to make I money? To support my daughter. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, not no, to support her, but, that's what it was. but to, to add to the pot mm. so that's that it. my daughter's not supporting you. He didn't say it in as many words, but, you know, they didn't know Lincoln very well. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of. You know, <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no better motivation. I'm going to drive pills mad as well in the edit here because I, you know, I, but this is this is something that needs to be pointed out all the time. There's no better motivator than making some money out of what you create. It's it's it, it's just it, I, if anyone disagrees with me, they don't even know what they're talking about. It, it's unbelievable the motivation you get from selling something mm. that you create. Mm. You could say that to a CEO of a, of a huge mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. If they are selling and they are making money, they but are happy. But also there That's are some the things that, when, you know, going back to that you can do it for the art, a bit like in a much, much lesser scale on my level of the Anthony Hopkins thing. I've done stuff again for money so that I can go and do a play at my favorite theatre, Hope Mill, yeah. you know, so that, or Live Theatre Company yeah. in Newcastle, where I know I will be working for not very much money per week, yeah. but therefore I have to do things in order to do that because obviously some of the best stuff mm. is in that type of en environment. Some of the mm. more commercial things I've done have not been as enjoyable, but they're there purely for the money. Well, so, you know, and that, that's, that <clears> stems <throat> into the same, in, well, I think it's in the same vein as what I do for BAFTA. I mean, you know, this is the, this is a very strange year, but it's the sixth year of me being BAFTA resident artist. And I do this for the outreach project, for BAFTA which, LA. Is, which is in LA, that makes money for kids that are in a creative spectrum that want to make a, a, make a living in the yeah. arts. Mm. And, that, and that's that's me giving back from, from that angle. But I always say to them, it's all about connecting. It's, I mean, I'll say that to Louis, my stepson. I, I mean, I'll say it to my own son, Louis. It's all about connecting. You've got to... It's, you know, was it Shy Burns Get Shy Burns Get Out? Well, there you go. That's your, isn't that a saying from the North East? <laughs> well, of course, of course it is. Well, there you do you go. want to have another go at that, Lincoln? Well, yeah, no, go, say it again. No, no I'm not going then into Then we can go on to your Texan accent no, and then perhaps your New York we're not doing Just do the Shy Burns Get Out again. Shy Burns Get Out. No, notes. say it in Geordie. Shy Burns Get Out. Shy Burns Get Out. Then try this, DK. Stick oh, no, a rubber no, hose no, up no, your nose. No, no, no. It's not You've got Geordie connections, side. I've DK. got connections, but as my wife will tell you, accents are one of my weakest party <laughs> tricks well, yeah, in the I, world. I, they, I, I'll second I've got that. a few. I'm pretty good at in limbo, limbo, but... Um, What's limbo? Limbo under... A, oh, I see. Not rem I thought that was an. I thought that was a language that oh, you'd no, made up. Oh, no. God. <laughs> To DK limboing no. is a language. We did, uh, yeah, we did limboing last Christmas. I think I went, I did, mm. did myself proud. Oh, I should but, look yeah, forward I to seeing that. I had to skip that. on the accents. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, good. I said, I'm another year older now. It might not work. You know, I, I, it's interesting with, with obviously my journey um, starting you know, with I've you. just never basically uh, you, seen, seen any. Any, I've you've never seen, seen anybody work so hard as as you do. I mean, I you, knock you, on doors. Well, yeah, no, well, I was knocking on doors, and I used to come back. Well, I was see. embarrassed. Well, I mean, you know, I was embarrassed that you know because I, I wasn't because I didn't see him. What you Lincoln? Was Lincoln embarrassed. No, I Lincoln think you is no, believe no. It. Uh, when I say embarrassed, Lincoln was a real foot soldier. And um, and he he literally would take off with a canvas under his arm, his iPad, and go down posh art galleries knocking on the door. Now, obviously, I didn't witness this, but when I say embarrassed, it's when you'd come back and you'd say to me that people were sort of peering through us and and, and, want, and they'd, so some people had said to each other, have you had that weird London guy that's come and knocked on your doors? And I'm thinking, oh, my God, no, that's just so cringe. But I've never, you know, Lincoln gets up in the morning with that motivation. And sometimes it, it, it it's hard. And, you know, just with, with life generally. And if one thing doesn't work, he will... He will like if one thing doesn't work, you just move on to the next. Well, yeah, I mean, to the know, next DK thing. says that I think he said it in our in our first chat about this. You know, I, I will try things, and some things aren't going to work. You know, it's it's uh, it's it, that's, some that's things. Life. Pe some things people have said to you, and I can see the way that they're saying it, 
um, they have they think it won't going to work and then are really quite surprised because mm. there's been a few naysayers. The one thing I've learned is you've got to keep going. You so, would be like one of those, you know, those Hollywood stories that I, well, I, I remember historically those kind of, you know, the real Hollywood stories where where there was somebody who'd been an extra in a film, but every single day they would turn up at the producer's office and knock on the door and, and they would sit outside the office with their sort of suitcase and stuff. And eventually the producer goes, oh my God, come on in then and I'm so mm, sick of you and mm. read that script and suddenly Judy Garland is born or something. Mm. That's the kind of thing that I That's think about you. That's a very that, interesting you. thing actually, do you know what? I only sent a message to someone two days ago about the very same thing. But the point being was, it's all to do with you cannot be rude. There, there's something about when someone Let ignores you. Let me write that you, down. Let me write that when down. someone Lincoln, ignores you. you. Yeah, please. Lincoln, rude. you cannot be right. rude. Oh, quoted on the 19th of September. -E. Yeah. What I'm saying by that is when you are looking for something out of somebody, right? Okay. You can be rather, oh you can God. be a little, I'm myself you a can huge be a little hole. bit too straightforward sometimes in life. And I have to pull you back from it. No, I know that. But it's like, there is a way. When you say things. you cannot be rude, in I'm, what context anyway, let's are you move talking? On. I don't, I don't I, you've lost, I've lost my, I've lost it. He's writing it down. You're honestly, I can't, I can't carry on. Um, let's 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 yeah. bring it back to branding for a second. Yeah, Denise, how have you emerged? How's your brand come together, especially over the last few years? You know, social media and your your presence on there. Mm. How has that helped your you know your creativity, finding new roles? Are you? I, I really want to ask, like, when you're involved in a project and you're you're telling the, the world about it on social media at the same time. Does that, is that kind of like a feedback loop? Does that all tie in? Is it part of the same process? Mm, possibly. Um, social media has definitely, definitely helped my, my non-scripted work, but not necessarily played into my scripted work. You wouldn't you be, what, meaning that I wouldn't get a job as an actress because of what I say or do on social media. Okay. But as regards of my certain um, views and the way I portray myself as me, Denise Welsh, mm -hmm. I know that that people will buy into me as a person mm. and therefore um, something, for example, that I have coming up that I can't say at mm -hmm. the moment, but I am passionate about a certain um genre of tv and it's something to do with that i i, I you know I, I will say it when i can but that is without a doubt because of the fact that i have talked about this mm, on on social mm. media a lot and and shown that i'm quite educated on it and quite no lot quite a lot about part it. of the mix surely i mean if you're talking about things like that and 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 exposing your personality through social media but that can go against you as an actress sometimes we are learning in this country that you can actually do one. America's always embraced it. You've got people like um, uh, Jamie Foxx. Mm -hmm. Now, Jamie Foxx is obviously a huge movie star and that mm -hmm. career continues. He's also, um, a um, he's got a sitcom on in, 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 in America um, that's very successful. He also is the host of Beat Shazam, which is a game show. Now, in this country, that just wouldn't happen. Mm. You wouldn't have one of your major leading movie stars also presenting a chat show. In a TV level, Bradley Walsh does it very well, a very respected actor and also presents The Chase. And and I've I've done that, but people don't like to cross it very mm, much. Mm. So sometimes the more enigmatic you are, there is an idea that you will get more um, acting work. But I've had to branch out because sometimes acting work hasn't paid the bills for me. Mm -hmm. So I've had to prove my other, my other arms. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, and I just try and I know that there's sometimes being on Loose Women has detracted from my acting work. I'm aware of that. But then again, what do I do? Not do Loose Women and sit at home mm. waiting for the acting job. Yeah, so you've got to find a balance. You've got to find it. You've got to find it. And I love and I, I think in that next year I've got a very, very, very busy year, but we're doing both, which is fantastic. But I've. Um, Don't work too hard, know, Denise. I know. They're the important things. That's 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 like what you were saying or you asked me earlier about uh, about weaknesses. You know, it's it's to do with you've got to know where to put your time. What do you think your weaknesses are? My my weaknesses are other people. I was I was I made a big mistake thinking I was going to put my art into galleries and put my art with agents. It's always end up in storage. They never do you enough shows. They never take enough time and effort over you. You know, they've there's always an artist of the month. There's always an artist that's you know in vogue. It's the it's it's a, it's an easy sell. 
Okay, it's, it's, it's the, 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 phrase, the phrase I would say is sitting on your hands. Don't sit on your hands. Get out and, you know, sell me. And that's when I realized, and this, this realization happened about four years ago. I've got to do this. I've got to build my own. My studio has got to be me. My studio has got to be able to give everything that I've got out there to the world. That's it. I cannot rely on anybody else. So what I can do is I can build internally my studio hence DK and Audrey and, you know, teams and that sort of thing. That's what we do. That's why we want people to come to us. And that's why I'm sharing this because if I didn't know that, I would be every year, oh, I'll find an artist. I'll find, sorry, I'll find an art agent. I'll find a gallery. Oh, that gallery hasn't worked very well. I've changed galleries. The amount of artists I hear, oh, I've changed galleries. It, it's it, that, that's a weakness. I've changed galleries. Oh, I found a new art agent. But that's what used to happen in our business as well. That somebody didn't work for a few months and then they just change agents, mm. yeah. even though not giving the agent the benefit that the agent could not get them seen for whatever whatever reason. So that's that's a, and the, one of my weaknesses used to be I'll find a gallery. Oh, you you remember? I said I'll find a gallery that will sell my work. Then I realised they're useless at selling. You go into a gallery, you're not going to find any. Some of them. Gonna, some of them. Most of them. Most of them. There, there's the Gagosians and there's the white cubes and then there's a void in between and then there's a sum on the ground floor here, which maybe they're working their way up. Maybe they'll prove themselves to be the next. Well, do you think that gal- you know, do you think that the gallery model would be w- would be more interest? Well, obviously it could be more interesting to you if they didn't expect exclusivity from there. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, I, well I, all the art agents I've got and galleries I've got, they don't have an exclusivity because they used anything. to all when you first started. Yep. They all were, you had to have an exclusive thing with them, yes, didn't you? That's right. And some of them will take up to 75%, 75% of your money. And that exclusivity was one way only, presumably. Oh, one way only. Yeah, oh, of course, absolutely. Of course it's one way only. Well, that's I remember right. when you ended up paying something, well, that something that like that me. percentage. And I tell every anymore. artist I know would never, ever have an exclusive deal with anybody. Anyone can sell the art. But 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 being devil's advocate, it is hard for maybe an emerging artist who doesn't have the, the, the power or, or, or the things behind you to say, I don't want to be exclusive to you. Do you think that they have to walk away from that offer if that's the case? Because they'd go, a gallery, you know, quite a big gallery might go, I like your stuff, but you've got to be exclusive to me. That's hard for somebody with no financial backup to I've got say the, no I've got to. I've the answer to every one of these questions, right? This is because this is all my brain does. OK, if if I had if I had a large super gallery come to me, OK, and said, I want to Denise buy. Not now, though, I'm talking about back ago. then. No, whatever. Yeah. And they say, I want to buy your full collection from you, but I want you exclusively to me. I'd have said, yeah, great. Go for it. Of course I would have done. That's what everyone wants. The dream, isn't it? It's the dream. Every artist says, yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm with. In, in this case, it would be. If you're with the the Gagosian or with Jay Joplin, one of these sort of big ones, the white. Kids. But I'm t- but I'm talking about somebody that comes to you on Instagram, yeah. and they are obviously a very talented artist, yes. and they say that the such and such a gallery yes. has said that not one of those Gagosian ones, but you know they've they've said they'd like to sign me, but absolutely I have to be exclusive. Yes. That then, would be very tempting, but I'm not talking about somebody who has a big no, collection. There's a, no, there's a secondary there's a secondary negotiation. The secondary negotiation is this. How many pieces will you sell for me if you want me exclusive? Because if you can sell my whole collection, okay, if you're in demand, because they obviously have power because that gallery wants them. So exactly, so they've got something. But they they need to question it. They still need to question it. They need to question it. You know, you can't be yes. I'm going to go with this great gallery. You've you've, you've got. That's it. You said what power do they have? But they've got power because they they are they are who they are. They've got their art. That That gallery art is the gallery that wants them. I think that's exactly it. That they still shouldn't feel. and And I think that creative people generally. You know, it's like with acting agents. We sometimes behave as if they employ us. Mm. We employ them. Mm. And that's what I've learned. I mean, obviously, my relationship with my agent has has, has grown. Uh, but, but generally, you used to be terrified to say something to your agent. And people would go, you employ them. But it always feels like they employ you. And I think you're dead right that even if somebody is quite green, but obviously very talented, that it's about not just going, oh, my God, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful I'll sign anything. It is about still questioning. Some, of course, you, many, you're many keeping artists. Your, you're you can keeping always, your powder dry, as what, you What Lincoln say. was suggesting, you can always put terms on that deal. Yes. You can always say, well, let's try it for three months. Let's try it for six months. Let's put me in a group show, see what happens. Or let's see what you can do with this first collection yeah. of works. I'll give you 10 works, see what you can do. But the rest of the works, no, thank you. You know, yeah. Oh, you can have and exclusivity, but you can have exclusivity like over these guys, words. And people like you, Lincoln. You have to learn that. That is something that people yeah. need. People like you, because there would be other artists saying to them, oh, "Bloody, bite their hand off." 
bite their hand off. You mm. know what I mean? There would be. That's that problem with that industry, that gallery and artist relationship that's grown up to have all the power or perceived power with the galleries. But it's not been like that in other other industries. So in copyright law, you know, if, if you're signing over your designs to someone who wants to do T-shirts, wants to do posters, wants to use it, it's very, very, spe- it's always been very specific usage. Yes, you can use these images, but you can use them for this amount of time yeah. with this process and in this public domain. But it doesn't give them the rights to use them in all the sure. other public I domains. sat down with a very, a very prominent UK artist um, about a year ago, and I, I, because I, we, had, we we met up for a coffee, I won't go into who it is, but he's a very powerful artist, and he and he expressed to me that um, he said, you know, the the art agent network, you know, let's let's take the static gallery to one side, an art agent. If you go with this art agent, they are going to be open the doors for you for the likes of the Tate. Yeah, so they're going to get you in there. They're going to get you in some of the bigger museums, okay? Because they have the connections. You know, they know Brian who works in the, he's the curator for the tape. Whatever, I don't even care about these things. This, I used to be thinking a lot down this line. I don't anymore. The last thing I want is, this is, this is a fact. The last thing I want is one of my works in a museum. It means nothing to me, nothing. None of these awards it mean used anything to, though. to me. It used to mean something to me. It doesn't mean anything anymore. And people would say, yeah, because they don't come knocking on your door saying they want to put your work in a museum. If the, if the you know, the Guggenheim said, I want to put one of your pieces of work in the museum, yeah, I'd be, I'd be up to negotiation, but I'm certainly not going to give them a piece. They can buy right. it from me. Right. This is what it works out as. <laughs> so they say that. So then this the dream is the, 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 the art agent comes knocking on the, on the studio door, Right, Mr. Smith, incredible, but you come with me. I'm going to get you into the Tate and we're going to, it, we, your, your work's going to explode. Now, Charles Saatchi did that with the Saatchi Gallery for Damien Hirst. I don't care what anyone said. If it wasn't for Charles Saatchi, Damien Hirst would probably be rummaging around like everyone else. This is a fact, okay? And then he built, then Hirst and the, and the, and the, and the crew built this, you know, the mechanics about, you know, Damien Hirst as, you know, an artist, an international artist, a very, very successful one. Fantastic. Then you've got, you go back a bit further, you see Bacon. And Bacon only really hit the big time when he went with the Marlborough because the Marlborough had the connections into the bigger shows. And that's the publicity, it's the media. All these things, they all play a massive part. The point being is that's like winning the lottery. And if if her, if Bacon was still alive and if, 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 you know, I, I'm not, I'm just saying, but it, and if her spoke honestly about this, of course it was. It was, of course it was like winning the lottery because that's the point. I haven't got much chance to win the lottery. I haven't got much chance of that happening to me. So one of my, one of the strengths I have is understanding that. So I've got to do everything I can to sustain a very good living, which I do because I work very hard and I cross all Platforms. Do you think that sometimes that because of your passion for sales, which has generated the career that you have, that sometimes you do yourself a disservice as regards it, it, it can appear to people that you don't care as much about what you're creating? Because I have, I, I know that's not true, but I'm saying it, it could be perceived as that because I remember being with one of your, um, with one of your collectors down in um, somewhere near London and we were in the front room and his wife said, He sits in front of that piece that he bought and cries. This guy had been an addict in his life Mm -hmm. and he had just worshipped Lincoln's stuff. And he he would literally sit in front of the piece that he had just bought and cry. It just it 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 just evoked such emotion in him that he'd moved on in his life, but it took him back to a certain place. Not that your work is all about that. Your work is whatever people see in it. I think. Yeah, I mean, there's, but I, but I, the I, fact mm-hmm. is that I saw for one of the first times the effect that Lincoln's because I live with a salesman, but I but I but I sometimes forget I live with such a brilliant artist and it was seeing the effect. It was like somebody who'd go and see a play or go and see a film and you know, it really had that kind of visceral effect on this person. And 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 I know how moved you were by it. So I kind of want to sit here, yes, as your wife, but as someone that sometimes you maybe play yourself down a bit. I am trying to build something that is autonomous. I'm trying to build something that doesn't need to be slipped into any art world. I'm trying to create something that can be duplicated. So, you know, for, I started in a garage, in our garage, you know, and, and, and you know, we have it's lots funny of- that Lincoln started in the garage and Matt's band, the 1975, started in the garage at the old house. It was exactly <laughs> that, but lots of, lots of creatives start, you know, in a, in, a, in a spare room, in their own bedroom, wherever it may be, it doesn't matter, but you've got to be able There's to- a company called Apple, that I believe, started in mm. the garage. Yeah, they started there as well. So, but the point is, is that you've got to look 
look at, you know, you've got to start somewhere, but you've got to set a goal. But one of the things you have got to do is you've got to be able to be supple enough to be able to move into different areas. Okay. You've got to be able to evolve different. Anyone will say this. Any businessman will say this. So yes, I do look at myself as a PR sales businessman, but I am in the, at the true heart of it all. My art reflects all that. So in a, it, there is a, there is this, to use the word of my stepson, a juxtaposition here of, of the two, of the two worlds colliding, you know, and, and, and literally just exploding with each other. Because when I'm working, I can't think about sales and marketing. So I totally get it. You know, uh, DK says, I spend 100% of my time either on sales and marketing or I spend 100% of my time actually creating yeah. something. And that's where you've got to be. You can't chop it half and half. It doesn't work. So you've got to be in those zones. But that's what I want to do. I want it to be that this can be duplicated. I want other people to go, I want to have a studio like Lincoln's got one day. And that's what I'm going to build towards. Because I, the only, the only artist I can think of would be Warhol who had the factory in New York and the way that he commercialized himself. So, you know, he, what I always think to myself, what would, what would Andy Warhol have done with the internet? What would he be like on social media? You know, he'd have been doing vlogging, he'd be doing blogs, he'd be doing filming, he'd be making tons more work, but he'd be getting it out there every day, every day, probably a live feed into his factory. That fascinates me. So I always look at, you know, when he had interview magazines, that was his sort of, you know, his world, his world of, of uh, celebrity and that sort. It, it's, it's fascinating to know that happened, you know, nearly 40 years ago or whatever. But that that world now is the world that every artist can be in immediately. Yeah. You can build your own studio online and be digital around the world tonight. You could actually, so today, well, you what about on Sunset podcast. Boulevard? You get that YouTube, you, if people were getting like over 2 million views, they'd get their own series. Exactly. Driving down Sunset Boulevard, where you were with us. So you could, be, you, know, you could be an those artist. Those YouTubers are taking over the world f mm. from their front room sometimes. You could be an artist in any genre, but in my opinion, visual. So you are an artist, you paint or you're a sculptor or whatever. And you could listen to you could listen to this podcast, and then basically by listening to, I think every one of them are going to different aspects of it. But at the end of it, you could say, you know what, I'm going to build profiles on all of these social media platforms. I am going to be an international artist, mum, sister, wife, uncle, auntie, grandmother tonight. T tonight I'm going to be international. And this is what people don't understand. You've got to be able to put in to get out. Nothing comes from nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes from nothing. If you don't do anything, nothing will come of it. If you give it absolutely 100%, you will get something. You will get a return on investment. That's what it's about. And it, that, I, it's, I, you know what? It's very funny. I get very passionate when you're around. I, you, you bring something out of me. Well, DK does as well. But what I'm trying to say is, is it's very, uh, when, I, when I have you around, I can really go into this zone, which is what, it's, what it really is about. And that's what, to me, it's really about uh, connecting with the world. And what are you making for my tea? Oh, oh my God. <clears throat> we're having that's a great, that's a lovely, having, that was a lovely ending. Yeah. We're having stir fry. <laughs>